Mr. Vuk Yelimich, Ambassador Kokfin Seng, who just left the room, and Professor Jeffrey Sachs, Honorable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor to address the climate situation on behalf of Japan, but at the same time on behalf of myself uh, in front of you at this conference. First of all, I would like to thank you very much the Center for International Relations and Sustainable Development, CIRSD, and its president and my dear friend, Mr. Vuk Yelimich, for inviting me back in Belgrade after a long absence. The last time I visited here, I wore a completely different hat. I came as one of the peace mediators from the United Nations. Today I'm extremely happy to be back here, not in the same role again, but as one of the leading climate change negotiators and also the climate dinosaurs this time. Because why I say the dinosaurs? Because I started this career and also climate negotiator back in 1997. The time was before the COP3 in Kyoto. So it's been 17 years. My name is Kunihiko Shimada also known as Kuni from Japan, because many of you and many of the, even the negotiators in the process do not know my last name, because I always address myself Kuni from Japan. And I'm the lead negotiator for climate change for Japan, as well as the co-chair and also chair of the several negotiation items under the UNFCCC negotiation. Besides these roles, I have running my own business at this moment and uh, doing the consultancy advisory service forum in Japan and abroad, uh, working on clean energy and environment. As you all are aware, the year 2015, which is next year, is a critical year for the climate negotiation. This is also true to the entire world as well, since the global leaders like you will agree to a historical agreement in Paris, COP21, in order to draw a roadmap to make this world and also the Earth a much pleasant place to live for our own and our future generations. The key word here is sustainability. In order for us to make the Paris Agreement and beyond successful, first of all, Policy makers and political leaders need to listen to the science really seriously and act upon the findings, as the Ambassador Cochran Sen just mentioned. As you all know, almost three weeks ago, last month, IPCC Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change completed its fifth assessment report and informed the world that the pace of the climate change in other words, warmings and cooling of the climate. It's much faster than we ever expected in the past. In order for us to make our ultimate objectives of keeping the average global temperature increase below two degrees compared to the time of the uh, Industrial Revolution by the end of this century. According to co-chair of the Working Group 3 of the IPCC, we need to do whatever methods we believe effective immediately at the serious scale. When I had a chance to talk with them privately and asking them if it would be feasible for us to keep this objective, I was informed that it would be still possible only if the magic happens. The magic, here I say, consists of the credible and aggressive enough Paris Agreement and its immediate implementation, full dissemination and implementation of clean and green technologies, including nuclear, all kinds of renewable energy options, CCS, carbon capture and storage, and CCUS, capture, capture and usage and storage, and the most importantly, changes in our mindsets. Now I would like to ask each one of you in this room, how many of you truly believe this magic or miracle is still possible and viable? By the way, let me tell you, I'm a quite optimistic person. 
maybe sometimes cautiously optimistic. But as a past peace mediator, I shouldn't be pessimistic at all because otherwise I'm completely failed. In Paris in December 2015, almost a year from now, we the parties will agree upon Paris Agreement with two major components. One is intensifying our efforts up to 2020 and the form of the past 2020 commitments and efforts. In the core agreement, in my belief, all parties, including Japan, also Serbia and other countries, are obliged to submit their intended nationally determined commitments, so-called the INDCs, in a quantifiable manner. Also, the party is obliged to be subject to ex-ante consultation of intended nationally determined the commitments and ex-post review of implementation of such NDCs. Also, parties are encouraged to integrate adaptation into their national strategies and program, program processes. In addition, in order to address the future needs for adaptation, and so-called MOI is a means of implementation, MOI, which consists of technology transfer and development, financing and capacity building based on the actual situation and condition of the time, these elements should not be fixed in a legally binding way at the time of the adoption of the 2015 Paris Agreement, because this is nationally determined and I also need to reflect the reality at the time. Rather, in my view, they should be addressed in the relevant COP decisions in order for us to respond to needs at the time in a timely manner. This is what I call being practical and realistic. Although elements like adaptation, means of implementation are critical importance to address climate change, for the sake of 2015 agreement in Paris, in my view, one of the essential components is the presentation of in intended nationally de determined commitments by all parties. However, it is also important to note again that such INDCs should not take an internationally legally binding format. Rather, they should be supported by policies and measures that respond to the capabilities and unique circumstances of a party. This would ensure universal participation, facilitate ambitious actions, and allow parties to update their NDCs in a flexible manner without going through the time-consuming process like ratification. Speaking of INDCs, with many party, while many parties, as the Ambassador San just mentioned, also the United States and EU and China already made some um, uh, critical announcement regarding their commitments for the future, have declared that they would submit the end of the first quarter of the next year, means by the end of March 2015. I have to admit, it is quite tough for my country, Japan, to tell whether it can do so as well. As you may all know, Japan has been suffering from the aftermath of the Fukushima nuclear incident happened on the 11th of March, 2011. Currently, all the actions related to the climate change, especially for intended nationally determined com commitments, are bound to our future and our decisions regarding what we, we should do uh, regarding the nuclear reactors and nuclear facilities in Japan, whether we should restart, how many of them, and so on. So without having the comprehensive energy structure and the strategies, it is quite tough for the Japanese people to come up with the credible number which can be presented to the world. As you know, Japanese people, unlike myself, are very serious people. They would like to keep the promise once they say it publicly and also internationally. So uh, they're very careful and cautious about making such an agreement. But 
I can tell you, I can assure you in a serious manner. Now the, my colleagues within the Japanese government are working very hard to come up with the specific numbers which can be presented to the world as soon as possible, hopefully by the end of March 2015, like the other, other parties, but hopefully by the mid-year next year. <laughs> I can tell you my personal story. The night before I departed to um, this, the Serbia, almost two, two, two or three days ago, I had a chance to be on a TV program. And that hour and a half was dedicated to educate the people, the public, regarding what we are facing regarding the climate change negotiation. Because many people in Japan are still not interested in the climate change issues at this moment, even though we hosted the third conference of the party back in 1997. And also, lack of the education, lack of the knowledge among the media people also had some cast a shadow for the understanding, lack of understanding among the public. So good news is actually I wear different hats and lots of hats at the same time. So at the time I was appeared, I, I appear on the TV as the CEO of my own company. I try to stay away from my civil servant thing because I'm not a civil servant anymore. But in that also program, I had a chance to discuss with the many experts who are also with me at the program, and Japan also needs to play the leading role in order to make the Paris Agreement successful. So uh, we have to be true and honest to the scientific, scientific findings. And the, as the professor uh, Jeffrey Sachs mentioned last night uh, at his uh, book launch, the technology is the key. Even though the political system is still the medi medieval uh, the level, but the, we, have the, we are facing a top-notch uh, technology at this moment, so we have the high hope. By the way, speaking of my country's own commitments to the world and also contribution to the world, Japan and the U.S. jointly announced their contribution to the Green Climate Fund on the 17th of November. Respectively, U.S. will contribute to 3 billion U.S. dollars, and Japan will contribute up to 1.5 billion U.S. dollars uh, for the success of the Green Climate Fund. Together with those amounts already pledged by the European Union, countries and others, there should be more than enough money to operationalize the work of the Green Climate Fund by the time of the COP21, I guess. Now it is the GCF's Green Climate Funds, particularly its boat, turn to start its work in a full scale as soon as possible. In order for us to make each of the nationally determined commitments possible, the massive and timely implementation of means of implementation is critical. First components, I'm happy to tell and inform all of you as the incoming chair of the Technology Executive Committee. Technology Executive Committee and its sister organization called the Climate Technology Center and Network, technology mechanism is fully operational now. And now I also very happy to announce for those, especially for those who are coming from the business community today, this Technology Executive Committee and the CTCNN, Climate Technology Center Network, have the credible framework called the Task Force, which also include the representative from the businesses and civil society and academia as the core member, equal standing member within Task Force the, to provide their expertise into the world. And also I myself go into Lima conference within the week time, and uh, especially for the second week, I'm invited to also the business meetings uh, in Lima. And I'm happy to also uh, share the views and also uh, uh, exchange opinions uh, through the business dialogues and negotiators dialogue, together with the director of the Climate Technology Center Network, Dr. Yuka Uzokainen from Finland. 
As I mentioned, also financial mechanism, which is consists of the uh, Green Climate Fund and the Standing Committee on Finance, is up and started to run. And uh, our old friend, the Global Environment Facility in Washington, D.C.'s, its accumulated experiences and expanded area for better address C and C, the climate change, can also address the issue and also the assure the level of the financing to the efforts done by the developing countries. Now also, technology mechanism and financial mechanism are jointly identifying the modalities for linkage and ways to work closely and effectively together. So when I served as the, uh, the chair for the another technology group in the past, that group organized the workshop and also event together with the financial mechanism that actually financing community, private sector businesses, and also developing countries, project developers. The key word coming from the private financiers and also businesses are, listen, technologies are there, monies are there. Only what is lacking is good project proposal. So this is true, and also this is still true, that the good project proposal based on the technology requests are still lacking. So now the, both the technology mechanism, financial mechanisms are ready to help and assist the developing countries, colleagues and friends to come up with the credible and financiable technology and also project ideas into practice. <coughs> But some of the ideas will be presented in Lima. So if you're coming to Lima, please stay tuned. With the adaptation works, the similar collaboration has been there. For example, joint work with the Technology Executive Committee and Adaptation Committee have already happened, and loss and damage related works also be into practice. So in conclusion, I will also repeat what I just said in a very short manner, concise manner. First of all, as the co-chairs of the working group three of the IPCC assessment report five mentioned, we need miracle and magic, but not too late to reverse the trend if we are serious and trust each other to implement what are available and what will be available to us. And universal participation is critical. There is always a case differentiate the responsibility and uh, respective capabilities. We observe that and respect that, but at the same time, rather than be into the binary uh, format, we have to trust each other and uh, take the actions all together right away. So everybody does what they can do based on capabilities, based on the nationally determined commitments, what they do domestically is a key, as the ambassador mentioned in his own address. And also technologies are essential. Rather than worrying about imaginary risks, test them and see if they're effective. If these technologies available to the world are effective enough to reverse the trend of the climate change, let's use them in a practical manner. And I would like to say, role of the regional communities and local communities are essential. Now the Global Environment Facilities CEO, she happened to be Japanese as well, her legacy project is on the cities and also regional communities. Rather than taking the top-down nationally determined actions, the each regions and also local community can take the actions in a very effective manner. So if you do have the good practices to share with your own country and also those who are in the same region, please share them and work with them. Today, I do hope that we will have rich discussions and share our views in order to provide political guidance to the negotiation process, which will be started in about 10 days. So it is not too late for us since the Lima Conference COP20 will happen in about 10 days. And I do also stress, like the, as the um, ambassador just mentioned, role of the youth is critical 
to make this reverse trend happen. Because you are also, like I still believe I'm still young, but the, probably you're younger than me. So in that sense, actually, you have the key to change this world a better place to live and as a happier place to live. So I would like to conclude with this. I hope I can pronounce it cor correctly. Thank you very much.